as we begin our all-night coverage of the homecoming of NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei and his two Russian crewmates, Vandehei culminating almost a year in space and the completion of a U.S. record-setting flight on the International Space Station. At this hour, Van de Heij and Russian cosmonauts Anton Shkaplerov and Pyotr Dubrov of Roscosmos are preparing to say farewell to the rest of the Expedition 66 crew and climb into their Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft that is docked to the Rosviet module on the Earth-facing port of the Russian segment of the station. They will close the hatch to the Soyuz shortly and prepare for their undocking from the station early Wednesday at 2.21 a.m. Central Time, 3.21 a.m. Eastern Time, bound for a deorbit and entry back into the Earth's atmosphere, followed by a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of south-central Kazakhstan, southeast of the remote town of Jezkazgan. Landing is set for Wednesday morning at 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.28 p.m. at the landing site in Kazakhstan, about two hours and 20 minutes before sunset. We'll talk more about the undocking and landing operations in a moment. Vandehei and Dubrov are completing a 355-day mission in space and aboard the ISS, a mission that will have spanned 5,680 orbits of the Earth and 150.6 million miles since their launch last April a voyage equivalent to some 312 round trips to the moon. Anton Shkaplerov, the Soyuz commander for today's return to Earth, who handed over command of the station earlier today to NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn, is wrapping up 176 days in space and aboard the ISS on this his fourth mission to the station. Shkaplerov will have traveled 2,816 orbits of the Earth, on a journey of more than 74 million miles when he lands some eight hours from now. Van de Heij's mission that evolved into a 355-day sojourn, a record for a single space flight by a U.S. astronaut, puts him third on the all-time endurance list for American space travelers at 523 days on his two flights, just behind former astronaut Peggy Whitson and astronaut Jeff Williams. Tonight's operation for undocking and landing being controlled half a world away at the Russian Mission Control Center on the outskirts of Moscow in the town of Korolyov, where Russian flight controllers are standing by talking to the crew uh, that uh, shortly will be entering the Soyuz spacecraft and closing the hatch to begin pre-undocking preparations. About an hour ago, the Soyuz was placed on autonomous power, the first step on the road home for Shkaplerov, Dubrov, and Vandehei. Nine is complete. It's ODF page 24. Copy, Anton. Just a reminder for you that the autonomous... The year-long journey for Vandehei and Dubrov began on April, 20, on April 9th, 2021, from launch site 31 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with the launch of the Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft. Vandehei and Dubrov launched to the station on a short two-orbit rendezvous along with Russian cosmonaut Oleg Novitsky, who returned home last October. October. Shkaplerov launched uh, back uh, in October on the Soyuz MS-19 with uh, two spaceflight participants uh, who came home with Novitsky. Shkaplerov remaining on board and of course tonight he'll return home with Vandehei and Dubrov on the Soyuz MS-19 following its undocking a few hours from now from the Rosviet module. And the closure itself should be performed at 7, uh, 10, 7 hours, 10 minutes. This is a view inside the Rosviet module that is docked to the Earth-facing port of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Uh, soon, uh, the uh, members of the Expedition 66 crew who will remain on board under the command of Tom Marshburn, the uh, Expedition 67 increment will begin at the moment of undocking at 2.21 a.m. Central Time, 3.21 a.m. Eastern Time, when uh, the uh, Soyuz MS-19 will depart the International Space Station uh, and uh, we'll back away for a special uh, photography and videography session that Dubrov will be conducting from the uppermost section of the Soyuz spacecraft, the orbital module, uh, the top section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft.
The uh, Soyuz will back away to a distance first of about 70 meters away from the uh, International Space Station. Anton Shkaplerov in the center seat of the Soyuz and the descent module flanked to his left by Dubrov and to his right by Vandehei uh, will then uh, manually uh, maneuver the Soyuz vehicle uh, to a position some 230 meters away from the International Space Station where Dubrov uh, will conduct uh, photography and videography of uh, the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and the recently arrived Prishal node module to which the Soyuz 21 spacecraft is located. Uh, that uh, spacecraft with Oleg Artemyev and uh, Russian cosmonauts uh, Denis Mateyev, Matveyev and um, Sergei uh, Korsakov arrived at the International Space Station almost 12 days ago to begin their six months aboard the International Space Station. Once uh, that photography is complete, after about 30 minutes of videography and uh, photography, the Soyuz will execute a uh, separation maneuver to begin to phase away for the from the International Space Station for the deorbit burn that will follow at uh, 5.34 a.m. Central Time, 6.34 a.m. Eastern Time. You see Anton Shkaplerov um, moving from the Soyuz uh, back into the Rosviet module. Uh, the crew, uh, you're looking at Pyotr Dubrov uh, there just inside the hatchway to the Soyuz vehicle. Uh, they are stowing last-minute items uh, before they uh, say farewell to their Expedition 66 counterparts and begin the process of closing the hatch. Uh, followed by uh, pre-undocking preparations. And uh, there is Dubrov uh, making his way back inside the International Space Station for the final few minutes uh, that he, Shkaplerov, and Van der will spend inside uh, the International Space Station before they close the hatch for good to the Soyuz MS-19. Last week, I had the opportunity to talk for a few minutes with Mark Vandehei on board the International Space Station to get his thoughts about uh, his final days on board the complex and what he has accomplished in almost a year on board the International Outpost. Let's take a look at uh, some of uh, what uh, Vandehei offered as uh, he spends his final days and moments on board the International Space Station. Tell us a little bit about the rigors of a long-duration space flight, the mental challenges of taking things one step at a time, one day at a time, weekend after weekend, when things are a little slower than they may be during the course of a week. Well, you've certainly got to have good habits. You've got to practice a lot of positive self-talk. You've got to re remain connected to the people that those have such a significant relationships in your life back on the ground. You've got to, of course, maintain the friendships with the people that you have on Earth. We're all very social creatures, and that uh, certainly enhances our quality of life tremendously. I had to spend a lot of time, tried to make a habit of every day meditating. That certainly helped out a lot with keeping myself in a kind of a good, grounded frame of mind. And like I mentioned earlier, really the important thing was recognizing that I had to stay focused on what I was doing at the moment. And also, one more thing, trying to look for things to be grateful for as opposed to things to gripe about. That goes a long way with making whatever you're doing uh, more palatable. What were some of the high points and some of the low points of spending a year away from the home planet? Uh, my favorite moments, the highest points for, for me, were the times when I was just hanging around, usually around a mealtime with my crewmates, and laughing so hard we were in tears about some comment somebody made or just all of us contributing to a, a sense of humor and enjoying each other's company. Low points, uh, physically this is a challenging environment to be in. I've had a lot of congestion and headaches. When there's times when you just feel very physically uncomfortable, those are probably the low points. It, it colors everything you're doing, and it takes a lot more work to uh, stay in the right frame of mind in those situations. You know, uh, we're often asked uh, 
with uh, seven or more people on board the International Space Station at any given time, it's hard to believe that you'd be lonely. But were there moments of solitude or loneliness that you had to work your way through during the past year? Actually, I don't think so. When, I, when you put in perspective how many challenges people have had because of COVID and all the periods of time when we've been isolated in our homes with very few people, in a way I've been fortunate. All of my needs have been met, including a lot of social needs with usually at least seven people on board, some people to live and work with every day. And they're wonderful people. So that was certainly a highlight for me. Um, so compared to what we've had to deal with on the ground, I certainly haven't felt like it's been a tougher situation as far as dealing with loneliness. And our behavior, health, and performance group does a fantastic job of helping us stay connected with our loved ones on the ground and even um, being able to talk to new people that I wouldn't normally have gotten the opportunity to talk to. Mark Van de Hei, uh, in a brief interview I did with him uh, last week. We'll hear more from Van de Hei as the evening goes along with our subsequent broadcasts. Meanwhile, landing preparations well underway in Kazakhstan. Uh, in the town of Karaganda, the staging city for tonight's landing operations, a NASA contingent of support personnel uh, led by ISS program manager Joel Montalbano. They're en route to the Karaganda airport where they will board an Antonov 26 aircraft with search and recovery uh, personnel from Rosaviatsa, the Russian search and recovery team. Uh, with, within which the NASA team is embedded. They'll uh, be flying on an Antonov 26 aircraft for a brief flight uh, to the southwest to the town of Jezkazgan, where Russian Mi-8 helicopters are standing by to take uh, the landing team support personnel on a 35-minute helicopter ride down to the landing site to recover the crew. Uh, there are eight uh, helicopters in play for tonight's landing. Six of those MI-8 helicopters will be at the prime landing site to the southeast of Jezkazgan. Two other helicopters uh, will be positioned at the ballistic landing site uh, to the southwest near Baikonur, the launch site, uh, in the unlikely event that the Soyuz would uh, land short of its intended target, uh, which is the prime landing site, of course, uh, to the southeast of Jezkazgan. The uh, landing team members will be boarding those helicopters at the Karagan, at the Jezkazgan airport uh, a few hours from now. Rotors will be spinning and they'll be uh, taking off in sequential fashion for the short ride down to the landing site where they will uh, form a racetrack uh, pattern around the landing site waiting for the arrival of the Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft. And once it touches down, they'll land in sequential fashion, erect a, an inflatable medical tent and near the spacecraft and begin to extract the crew pretty quickly, uh, one after the other. They'll be put, uh, the crew will be put in, uh, in chairs right outside of the spacecraft before they're carried into a nearby inflatable medical tent to get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits into more comfortable clothing. They will board uh, those Russian helicopters uh, to uh, fly about two hours back to the staging city of Karaganda, where the crew will split up with Van de Hei boarding a NASA jet uh, for the flight back to Houston. Uh, the two cosmonauts will be boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to their training base in Star City outside of Moscow. Once again, uh, there's the scene inside the Rosviet module, uh, the tunnel and the short uh, passageway that leads uh, to the open hatch to the Soyuz MS-19. About 15 minutes from now, we're expecting uh, the crew uh, to uh, gather in that passageway for final farewells with their Expedition 66 counterparts uh, before they make their way inside the Soyuz vehicle, close the hatch, and uh, begin uh, uh, to depressurize the small tunnel uh, and uh, conduct other pre-undocking preparations that will lead uh, to an undocking command at 2.19 a.m. Central Time 
That will open up the hooks holding the Soyuz to the Rosfiat module. That will take about 90 seconds to complete physical separation as the springs on either side of the docking interface push off against one another. Schedule for 2.21 a.m. Central Time, 3.21 a.m. Eastern Time. After the uh, Soyuz hatch is closed, uh, which is expected uh, a short time from now, uh, the crew uh, on board the Soyuz, Shkaplerov, the Soyuz commander, Van de Hei, and uh, Pyotr Dubrov, uh, will uh, discuss uh, other activities uh, with Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center before they uh, begin uh, the process of suiting up in their Sokol launch and entry suits and conducting leak checks to ensure that their suits uh, have good integrity uh, before uh, other uh, preparations uh, are undertaken. And a good view there of Mark Van de Hei, who's wrapping up 355 days in space, the longest single space flight in U.S. space flight history. Although uh, it is currently snowing in Karaganda, the forecast for landing to the southwest in Jezkazgan calls for scattered clouds, mostly clear skies, and temperatures about 45 degrees Fahrenheit to greet the three returning crew members. The landing again uh, is uh, on tap for 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time, which is 5.28 p.m. at the landing site in Kazakhstan, some two hours and 20 minutes before sunset. And uh, Pyotr Dubrov uh, now in the field of view. Once again, uh, Van de Hei and Dubrov launched on April 9th, 2021, on the Soyuz MS-18 spacecraft along with Oleg Novitsky. Novitsky returned home last October. Dubrov and Van de Hei remained on board, joined by Anton Shkaplerov, who will be the Soyuz commander for tonight's landing. Shkaplerov will be in the center seat of the Soyuz, with the call sign of Astra, you'll hear uh, Russian flight controllers reporting uh, as they're calling and uh, talking to the crew during uh, pre-landing and entry activities. Shkaplerov will be flanked to his left by uh, Dubrov, who will be board engineer number one tonight. Mark Van de Hei on the right is board engineer number two.
Skapler off uh, in the field of view at the hatchway. He uh, is wrapping up 176 days in space and aboard the International Space Station. At the time of landing, he will have totaled 708 days in space on his four flights, putting him seventh on the all-time endurance list. Just a reminder for the uh, transition to independent power time, it is 6.50. Down at the landing site, uh, in addition to the half dozen Russian Mi-8 helicopters uh, that will be uh, flying from Jezkazgan uh, to the landing site uh, to recover the crew, the landing is being supported by uh, a series of all-terrain vehicles and uh, the Antonov-26 that is transporting the uh, search and recovery forces and the NASA support team from Karaganda to Jezkazgan will be uh, flying in a racetrack pattern around the landing site uh, to provide uh, a uh, command and control relay capability from the Soyuz spacecraft uh, to the Russian flight controllers outside of Moscow. You saw Matthias Moore, the European Space Agency astronaut, uh, in the field of view there. He and uh, the rest of the Expedition 66 crew uh, that will become Expedition 67 at the time of undocking a few hours from now. They remain on board under the uh, command of NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn. I am sending that to command. Now it is B6 command. B8 or B8 command is being sent. And D or D2 command. Moscow, Austria 1. So four commands have been sent. As per the step 2.3.1, copy. Now you can proceed to step 23.2, uh, the preparation for uh, the hedge cover closure, OBOSU and OBSU. Copy. In work. So. Moscow, I'm disconnecting uh, the COM cap right now. Sounds good. During the course of uh, 355 days in space for Van der Heijen Dubrov, they saw the arrival of 15 visiting vehicles or modules and the departure of 14 visiting vehicles. Pyotr Dubrov conducted four spacewalks during uh, his time aboard the International Space Station in this, his first flight. Van de Heij, as we mentioned earlier, completing his second mission into space and what he has said, uh, admittedly, his last space flight. And he'll come in uh, third on the all-time U.S. space flight endurance list with 523 days in space on his two missions to the International Space Station third in the all-time list uh, behind uh, Peggy Whitson and Jeff Williams.
And in the field of view now uh, is Russian cosmonaut Oleg Artemyev, who arrived uh, on the Soyuz MS-21 spacecraft almost 12 days ago, along with Denis Matveyev and Sergei Korsakov. Other members of uh, the Expedition 66 crew, soon to become Expedition 67, gathering in the uh, passageway of the Rosviet module. At the time of undocking, as uh, mentioned earlier, Expedition 67 formally begins under the command of NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn, joined uh, by other NASA astronauts, uh, Roger Chari and Caleb Barron, and European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Maurer. Denise Matveyev now in uh, the foreground. Once again, uh, after the undocking at uh, 2.21 a.m. Central Time, 3.21 a.m. Eastern Time, Shkaplerov uh, will conduct a uh, separation burn of about 13 seconds to uh, move the uh, Soyuz to a distance of about 70 meters away from the International Space Station, at which point uh, Pyotr Dubrov will make his way uh, from the descent module to the upper section of the Soyuz called the orbital module, armed uh, with cameras, uh, both still uh, digital still cameras and a video camera to conduct uh, photography of the uh, Russian segment of the station, first at 70 meters and then at about 230 meters. This uh, will be manually flown by Shkaplerov uh, to provide photo documentation uh, at a distance ultimately of about 230 meters away from the station. It'll take about 30 minutes to complete this uh, photographic exercise before uh, Shkaplerov uh, conducts a final separation burn of about uh, 70, 17 seconds in duration to begin phasing away from the International Space Station for good. The uh, Soyuz will wind up uh, at a point well away from the station for the start of the deorbit burn Wednesday morning at six at 5:34 a.m. Central Time, 6:34 a.m. Eastern Time, that will be a four-minute, 39-second retrograde braking maneuver to slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit to begin its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere. Some 28 minutes after the deorbit burn. The uh, automatic computers on board the Soyuz will trigger a separation of the three sections, a pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz, enabling uh, the descent module where the crew will be located in their Soka launch and entry suits uh, with the uh, heat shield at the bottom of the Soyuz facing the direction of travel for the entry back into the Earth's atmosphere and uh, for van der Heijen Dubrov, the first tug of Earth's gravity in almost a year. Temperatures around the Soyuz will build to some 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit with a plasma atmosphere uh, that will envelop the Soyuz as it descends through the atmosphere. Exit from uh, the plasma regime uh, will uh, take place at about 6.11 a.m. Central Time with uh, G-loads, uh, the maximum G-loads uh, for the crew of about three to four Gs before the uh, command is issued to open up the parachutes on the Soyuz, first a drogue chute that will then pull out the main parachute with landing uh, scheduled at 6.28 and 36 seconds a.m. Central Time, 7.28 and 36 seconds a.m. Eastern Time about uh, 90 miles to the southeast of the town of Jezkazgan.
RSMKS, Tupo Moscow, SG-1. ISS, MCC Moscow, and Space Ground 1. At this hour, the International Space Station is flying some 260 statute miles above uh, Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. All station systems operating normally, and again, a view uh, inside the Rosfiat module to the hatchway to the Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft to which it has uh, been linked since last April 9th, following its launch from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. ISS on MCC Moscow on space to ground one. RSMKS Tupo Moscow, VSG-1. ISS MCC Moscow on space to ground one. RSMKS Tupu Moscow VSG-1. Station Moscow, space to ground one. We are expecting uh, the crew members uh, to uh, appear very shortly for uh, an opportunity to say farewell to one another before Shkaplerov, Vandehei, and Dubrov move in uh, through that hatchway to the Soyuz MS-19 vehicle, where they will close the hatch, conduct leak checks at the uh, docking interface uh, between the Soyuz and the International Space Station to make sure that uh, it is ready to be uh, depressurized. The small vestibule or passageway will be uh, depressurized down to vacuum, setting the stage uh, for the command uh, in a few hours to uh, open up the hooks holding uh, the Soyuz to the Rosfiat module. Springs on both sides of the docking interface will push off against one another, and the Soyuz MS-19 will be free to back away and begin the journey home. Anton Kaplarov, the Soyuz commander, Pyotr Dubrov on his left, and uh, in the background is Oleg Artemyev. 
You're looking great. There's Sergei Korsakov on the right. Can you see us? We can see you very well. NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei wrapping up 355 days in space. And close the hatches. It's time. Mark, can you please get closer to Piotr so you can be seen better? Отлично, Олег. Excellent, Олег. European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Moore saying farewell. Shkaplerov handed over command of the International Space Station on uh, Tuesday morning to uh, NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn. There is Kayla Barron saying farewell to uh, her crewmates. She, Marshburn, Roger Chari, and Moore will remain on board the station until late April when they return home in the uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon. Oleg, this is Ignat. Are you ready with the hedge cover closure prep? It was done at 2302. 23.3, per 23.3. Van High saying farewell to Tom Marshburn, the new commander of the station. Again, uh, Expedition 66 will become Expedition 67 at the time of undocking. Pyotr Dubrov uh, has made his way inside the MS-19. Artemiev saying farewell to Mark Vandehei. Stand by, please. We just wanted to have a small bite. Yes, we can see.
That is uh, Denise Matveyev in the foreground. He and Artemiev will be conducting a number of spacewalks in the months ahead to continue outfitting the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory Module and the European Robotic Arm that is part of the uh, Naoka Module. Anton Shkaplerov, the Soyuz commander, now making his way through the hatch. And Van de Heij, now leaving the space station, making his way inside the Soyuz. The uh, three departing crew members now inside uh, the Soyuz MS-19, preparing uh, for hatch closure. Я смотрю, с заминкой справились. Есть добро на закрытие. Люков. Олег, I can tell that uh, you are done with whatever you wanted to do. Ready for hatch closure. The uh, Rosviet hatch is closed. Temperature is uh, less than 15 Temperature is less than 15 degrees, and it's jumping constantly. It's fluctuating. Anton, we copy. As soon as the uh, Soyuz hatch is closed, Shkaplerov will begin a series of leak checks across the docking interface between Soyuz and Rosviet before the um, departing crew begins uh, to don their Sokol launch and entry suits.
Moscow, Moscow, Australia. Moscow, Australia. Go ahead. Look, Bell SU hatch is closed, and we're on page 237. Copy, and we have reported it. Copy. You are on page 237. Please provide a running commentary of everything you do. Copy. Will do. And uh, Anton Shkaplerov now reporting that the hatch on the Soyuz MS-19 is closed at 11.16 p.m. Central Time, 12.16 a.m. Eastern Time. So the hatches are now closed with the uh, departing crew aboard the Soyuz. They'll begin a series of vestibule leak checks for the small passageway at the docking interface between the Soyuz and the International Space Station before uh, beginning uh, to don their Soka launch and entry suits. SSVP is on uh, hooks uh, closed, closed, and I'm sending the S-17 command, S-15 correction. Right, I understand. Backup, internal docking and transfer system command has been sent. D8 is no longer illuminated. And now I'm sending the Delta 7 command. SSVP power is on, and we are monitoring S11, Sierra 11. S11 is illuminated. The transfer hatch is closed. That's wonderful. Copy. S11 is illuminated. We are sending the Delta-8 command to turn off the um, docking and internal transfer system, SSVP. SSVP is off. Okay, pressing on. S-11 is no longer illuminated. I am sending S-16 command then for the deactivation of the backup internal. With the hatches closed uh, between the Rosviet module and the Soyuz MS-19 spacecraft uh, here in Mission Control in Houston, the uh, Orbit 1 team of flight controllers uh, now on console, having completed a handover from the previous team. They will be on console throughout the course of the overnight hours, uh, looking over the crew's shoulders and uh, monitoring activities as we uh, prepare for the uh, return to Earth of Mark Van de Heij, Pyotr Dubrov, and Anton Shkaplerov. Leading uh, the Orbit 1 team is uh, Rick Henfling, the flight director. To his right, uh, veteran astronaut Tracy Caldwell Dyson, who will be on uh, talking to the space station crew throughout the course of the overnight hours when required. To recap, uh, the uh, departing crew now aboard the Soyuz MS-19, the hatch closed to the Soyuz vehicle about four minutes ago at 11.16 p.m. Central Time. The uh, departing crew now uh, will conduct a series of leak checks across the docking interface before they begin to suit up in their Soka launch and entry suits and conduct other pre-undocking preparations that will lead to the uh, undocking of the Soyuz from the Rosviet module at 2.21 a.m. Central Time, 3.21 a.m. Eastern Time. The Soyuz, under the command of Anton Shkaplerov, will back away from the Rosviet module and uh, will, ma under the manual control of Shkaplerov, uh, translate uh, to a distance away from the station to allow Dubrov to climb into the upper section of the or, or the orbital module of the Soyuz to begin about 30 minutes of uh, photographic documentation with a digital still camera and a video camera of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and the Prashal node module to which uh, the Soyuz MS-21 spacecraft is docked. MV. After that, uh, the Soyuz uh, will uh, depart the station for the final time, move to a safe distance away from the International Space Station for the deorbit burn, 
at uh, 5.34 a.m. Central Time on Wednesday morning, 6.34 a.m. Eastern Time, a four-minute, 39-second retrograde maneuver, a braking maneuver to allow the Soyuz to drop out of orbit for the start of its entry back into the Earth's atmosphere and a landing under the parachutes at uh, 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time, Wednesday morning, to bring to an end 355 days in space for Van de Heyen Dubrov and 176 days in space for Anton Shkaplerov. In Kazakhstan, uh, the search and recovery forces, along with an embedded uh, NASA support team, is uh, at the Karaganda Airport, the staging city, uh, for tonight's landing operations. They'll be boarding an Antonov-26 aircraft shortly for a short flight down to Jezkazgan to the southwest, where Russian Mi-8 helicopters are standing by to take the landing contingent down to the landing site itself for the extraction and recovery of the crew and the start of uh, their return back to their respective homes. Van de High boarding a NASA jet on Wednesday morning for the flight back to Houston. The two cosmonauts boarding a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft for a flight back to Star City, their training base on the outskirts of Moscow. Orbital module uh, on. Copy. Now, uh, we need to uh, raise PPO2 up to 170. All right, copy. So with the... Uh, Three departing crew members now aboard the Soyuz. Hatch closed, leak checks underway. Uh, we'll wrap up this first broadcast of the evening and look towards our undocking coverage at uh, 1.45 a.m. Central Time, 2.45 a.m. Eastern Time on NASA television as Van de High Dubrov and Shkaplerov depart the International Space Station for the beginning of the trip back to Earth. We'll see you in a few hours. For now, this is Mission Control Houston.